like to read verses 1 through 24. We're in a series of studies in this marvelous book, and we've now come to the story of Gideon. Judges chapter 6, beginning with the first verse. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Because of the power of the Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and other eastern peoples invaded the country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep nor cattle nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count the men and their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. Midian so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. When the Israelites cried out to the Lord because of Midian, he sent them a prophet who said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I snatched you from the power of Egypt and from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them from before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live, but you have not listened to me. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak at Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Abiezrite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. But, sir, Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? But Lord, Gideon asked, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites as one man. Gideon replied, If now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. And the Lord said, I will wait until you return. Gideon went in, prepared a young goat, and from an ephah flour he made bread without yeast. Putting the meat in a basket and its broth in a pot, he brought them out and offered them to him under the oak. The angel of God said to him, take the meat and the unleavened bread, place them on the rock, and pour out the broth. As Gideon did so, with the tip of the staff that was in his hand, the angel of the Lord touched the meat and the unleavened bread. Fire flared from the rock, consuming the meat and the bread, and the angel of the Lord disappeared. When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he exclaimed, Ah, oh, sovereign Lord, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace. Do not be afraid. You are not going to die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, The Lord is Peace. And to this day, it stands in Ophrah of the Abiezrites. This is the word of the Lord. We've already been reminded of this uh, Memorial Day weekend and the very sobering uh, purpose of Memorial Day for those of us who are Americans, where we are encouraged to remember the more than one million men and women who paid the ultimate sacrifice for the freedoms and privileges that we enjoy. It, it's a horrific price, uh, along with the treasure, the inestimable value of the blood that has been shed for us and also the many tears. Uh, it's appropriate to add to that price the suffering of loved ones who are left 
bereaved because of the various engagements and wars in which our young men and women have fought. It's also appropriate to add to this by extrapolation those who are even now living uh, in situations where they've been placed in harm's way, whether in the theaters of Afghanistan, Iraq, or elsewhere. And you know, it, when you think about it, and I know that most of us, in a way, try not to, uh, but it does press upon us the question of what kind of life, what quality of life would be worthy of this terrific sacrifice? Uh, what quality of life corporately and individually? Uh, how do we respond? Uh, do we uh, just, you know, toss the frisbee and say thanks and, you know, just kind of go about life's business, or is there something more that's required of us? And I think there is a kind of a personal assessment that most of us uh, undertake as we think about the ways in which our lives have been benefited so much by those who've gone before. There is, of course, a more trivial purpose for Memorial Day weekend, and it is the unofficial start of the summer. Uh, it's the excuse to bring out the barbecue and put on the bathing suits and make final plans for any vacations that you may have in mind. And that may seem to, in fact, be an insult to this other purpose, but in an interesting way, it always occurred to me that there is a kind of parallel. Uh, for most of us, uh, we do do some of this personal reflection in the connection with New Year's Eve, I guess, because it's assumed you're going to make some resolutions. But in practice, for those of us who are students, I always found it much more natural to do all the resolutions on Memorial Day weekend after final exams. Uh, it's then that I began to think about the imbalance of my life or why it was that I didn't seem to, I don't know, have more discipline to do all that homework back when it ought to have been done. Uh, it is also a time where, on the other side of graduation, that most of us give thought to the priorities of our lives and want to reprioritize based on the fact that, well, we've been cheating ourselves and cheating our loved ones, perhaps cheating a wife or a husband if you're married by being married to your job. You're thinking of all the things that you've left undone, all the responsibilities that are there at the workplace, and, well, you can't wait to kind of get it right with that long overdue trip up to Acadia National Park or the B&B &B that's your favorite spot to renew your love. It's also a time, frankly, for me and probably for many of us where we think about our spiritual lives and make plans and resolutions to get that right, uh, to be more faithful in prayer, more faithful in the reading of God's Word and fellowship with His people. And Anyway, I, th I think it's not at all surprising that that's the way Memorial Day weekend works for so many of us because it actually coincides with massive transitions in our lives. According to Allied Movers, this is the beginning. Well, in fact, May is apparently National Moving Month. I didn't realize there is such a thing, but apparently that it, it's so. And it begins a season where the vast majority of Americans, if they're going to move, that's when they move, well over half during uh, this summer period of time. It's a time where, of course, there's moving connection in connection with uh, the student life. Uh, we have, I don't know, how many high school graduates and college graduates and graduate school graduates do we have in our midst and fellowship? Don't be embarrassed. A professional school, wherever you... Look at all the, the sea of hands uh, of those who are just about to commence. That, that's why they call those graduation exercises commencements, to commence the life for which they've been prepared, preparing all this time. Uh, to begin this new chapter, that's a time for reevaluation if ever there was one. And oh, by the way, we're also heading into the top months for weddings. Uh, there's another reorienting of our lives, isn't it? Uh, more than half of all weddings take place between now and the end of summer. Uh, so there you have it. 